Well, hello, traders and investors. I'm L.A. Little, and this is your daily Neo TA wrap. Take a look at these markets, doing it from a neoclassical perspective. That means each time we're asking ourselves what happened a day and what does it tell us about the coming ones. Do a show four times a week, every Monday through Thursday, broadcast at every four until o'clock Eastern Time, archived on YouTube and under channel L.A. Little. If you haven't uh, subscribed to the uh, public show here, you can reach up in the right-hand corner and do so anytime. Push public content. You'll get a notification. You know, at the top of the show, I always say that spill, you know, 30 seconds of, you know, what's happening here. And I talk about the neoclassical model. You know, its, it's anniversary is, is right around this time, about 10 years ago, a decade ago. Uh, I started to put together the makings of the model, um, refined it, uh, pretty much had it done towards the end of 2006, uh, 2007. Served very well in the crash, made money 2008 during the crash, 6% actually returned to investors. I took and uh, uh, used that model to see the turn in 2009, got long, and got a good piece of that, if not more, most of it. Uh, it's been long ever since. Uh, there's been a couple times, or a few times actually, that it's worn, told you to be prudent, and you should. And when it does that, it, it's supposed to do that. It's trying to keep you out of trouble. You can't predict the turns because you can't know with certainty the, um, you know, it's a, it's a necessary but not sufficient condition when the model gives you a signal. And so it simply says, you know, the probabilities are increasing that something bad could happen. And when that's the case, just like it was May a year ago, it gave us a signal and told us to get safe. And you, if you look back, you know, in June, you had a big spill. So the model is simple, elegant, and it performs. And it's based on supply and demand. And it's based on supply and demand that you see on the charts. And so, you know, if you don't know about it, uh, you know, we're going to be revamping the site pretty soon. We'll open it back up to sue uh, uh, folks that want to join. And hopefully uh, you'll be interested when we do that. Let's take a look at the ending numbers today. A lot of red on the screens. Uh, you actually uh, got a push up on the Dow and it finished higher, uh, but elsewhere, pretty much red across the board. The S&P tried to go green, just missed it. All the selling was in the small caps and the uh, technology. Technology beaten up with uh, the Apple results down 2.5% today. All takes another spill. That didn't help. Gold, silver, they struggled. Russell actually breaks a swing point low, goes bearish. We'll talk about that. If you look over in Europe, SSMI still heading down. The Swiss market down. Uh, the um, uh, Asia was down off of the back of, mostly off of the back of uh, uh, the um, All Ordinaries in Australia. And you had those pullbacks in Europe uh, that we thought would give us a down day today. Let's take a look at the uh, charts. Uh, we're going to start here with the S&P 500 as usual. Got a doji, a little down day, a volume about the same. Uh, there's not a lot to say here. Still range trading, tra trading in the bottom range. And so that range is essentially uh, this area here. And then you got the top uh, range. And actually, it's a little bit lower. It's about there. And so we're down in the bottom uh, half of the range. So I don't know if the S&P uh, did anything. The strength here primarily was a rotation uh, to the financials. Where you saw the weakness today was what has been leading, and that's the NASDAQ, the NDX. Here today on that uh, index, you actually got the pullback. You come into kind of the dividing bar between the top and bottom here. And in this particular case, you know, you actually got into it, and you're right there on the cusp trying to decide what to do on the NASDAQ. And so a negative day volume expands a little bit. Um, I don't know that it is a bad day because what you actually got, this top uh, 5248, you trade into it, you close just over it. So you'll need another attempt to get underneath it. If we go to the NDX, NDX, same sort of uh, thing. You know, they trade down. Now, they had been even stronger. That bar that is on the NDX is here. Didn't even get to it. Uh, so I don't know that we need to say much more about it now. The problem's the Russell. Because if we look at the Russell, and we talked about this last night, the Russell was coming after swing point lows. Did not hold. Broke them. 
right? Volume's pretty heavy. You break a swing point low. That's going to be, that's going to be slightly less volume than it was there. And you got another swing point low over here. It's going to try to go after as well. Uh, the, the issue now, of course, is that ABCD structure to the downside is actually on the table. And you've got the move, right, that can take you lower. That's the Russell. Now, that's on the short-term time frame. If you look at on the uh, weekly time frame, the Russell's trying to come back to finally do a bullish retest region. Now, that's the good part. And that is, is that um, this is this is an area that you would expect because you have overlapping, right? You would expect support to come in as it gets into this area right here. And so, to me, you know, the thing now is, okay, does you know the the model says does it give you support where it should? If it does, then everything's hunky dory. If it doesn't, then something bigger than you think is up and that's what we have to watch next and that's the Russell so that's the indexes now I've, I gave you the last couple of nights I've been talking about uh, you know the world markets in particular the European markets and telling you that it's in Europe that the issues were there and it was going to probably spill over to here for some reason or another which it did and that's because we're all interconnected now the European markets, if you remember, the German market went up and tested twice into this bar, got over it both times, failed, had, had almost as much volume the second time around, excuse me, not, uh, not as much, but almost as much, but then failed, right? So today you push down into the swing point highs, and we talked about that as well, saying that as we're coming back into these, they're broad, we could get deeper. But we'd want to see how it trades into those areas and then decide what that means. Well, what did it do? It popped into them, flips around, does a hammer reversal, wants to go back up and test the top side. So I think the European markets, at least those that are built on the euro, are going to try and trade higher. Now, you may ask why, because, I mean, if you go look at some other European markets, in particular the Swiss market, this market continues to get hammered day after day. And the reason, of course, is that the euro is propping up the European markets, whereas the Swiss um, um, currency isn't doing the same. Is that because it's going up versus the euro going down? Well, if we flip over and look at the euro, the euro actually tried to bounce today, but by the end of the day, it given it up. And the dollar, of course, flipped around and tried to go higher. If we pull it back, look at it on a weekly chart, what you can see here on the weekly is that uh, this market actually is under back over. This one's actually trying, at least at this point, to get a flip back over. But we've got another couple of days. It still could trade lower. It's at the bottom end of a range, testing in some swing point lows, trying to hold. That's the European. Now, why would Switzerland be so different? I've been puzzled by this for a while. And, and the reason for it is because this is also decreasing. So the Swiss currency is also decreasing. And you would think that would support the Swiss market. Well, so far it hasn't. And the question is, is why? We do know that the, the um, Swiss Central Bank kind of has a mandate that if you get too cheap here, they're going to come in and, and uh, excuse me, if you get too expensive, they're going to come in and uh, knock it down. And that's not the issue here, though, yeah, because it's falling. And so why is the Swiss market performing so badly? And, uh, you know, maybe for someone from Switzerland will write me and tell me why, but uh, that market is not getting uh, any lift even with a declining currency. Tomorrow, we've got big earnings after the bell. You got Amazon, you got Google, and so the tech sector in the spotlight again. What you did see today is you saw some rotation into the um, uh, financials, and you, you saw it across the board, most financials. And I'm pulling up the major sector here, and I'm just I'll just throw up the XLF for convenience. Uh, but this was relatively strong today compared to what you saw elsewhere, going up, attacking a swing point high. 
elsewhere market selling off that's why the s p held up much better than the nasdaq i don't believe that's going to change we may see this market uh, get a little bump up tomorrow in front of those earnings the big earnings out of tech uh, Google, Amazon, uh, there's actually a couple others. Those are the big names, though. We'll see what it does. My expectation, given what I see in Europe, given what I see here on these charts, is that we're going to see the market try to bump up tomorrow. Have a good one. I'll see you after the close tomorrow, and we'll see what the big cap tech stocks do again. Good night.